Welcome back to Caleb Curry's tutorials on the intertubes. I am your host Caleb Curry and in this video we're going to be talking about doing this junk but for multi-dimensional arrays. So how exactly do we iterate through a multi-dimensional array? This is super useful if we need to access each data point inside of a multi-dimensional array. But I tell you what, it's no sense in doing this nonsense unless you have first checked out our sponsor Dev Mountain. Dev Mountain is a coding boot camp and their goal is to be very career centric, meaning they want to help you guys get a job in the industry. So you might learn JavaScript, you might learn React, you might learn Node.js, but the biggest thing is that they're gonna teach you how to take all these pieces, put them together, and build real world applications that'll help you get a job in the industry. So don't waste any more time, jumpstart your career, check out Dev Mountain, link in the description. Let them know I sent you their way, they'll give you $250 off. Now let's get back to multi-dimensional arrays. So first thing, we got to make a multi-dimensional array. So we're going to start with a square array. So we're just going to go down here, change grades a little bit. So that's the first row, essentially. And we're just going to put some other stuff in here. We're going to start using for loops, and then we're going to talk about the for each method for multi-dimensional arrays, which is equally as useful. So we're going to go through both options. All right, so there is our multi-dimensional array. And we're just going to get rid of this. We're gonna assume the best that no one messes up our array and makes gaps. <laughs> so let's go over a for loop for a multi-dimensional array. And I'm just gonna get rid of this. We're gonna do it from scratch. And we're gonna just get rid of that too. Let's just, let's just get rid of everything. There we go. <laughs> nice and clean. So the first thing, we need to make a for loop for the outer elements, so the rows. So we usually use i for that. So we'll just go i through grades.length. I++. This is going to iterate through the rows. So if you just console log and do grades of i, each one is going to be a row. So we'll get this array and then the next array and so forth. Do refresh and you can see indeed that's what happened. So each one of those seems to be right. Awesome. So if we want to go through each element, we need to do another for loop inside of this. So that's going to look like this. Let me get rid of this console log here. For and then by convention, we use K or J or something like that. I'm going to go with K. I like K. In fact, some people call me K. So yeah, K is less than, okay, here's a question. What, what do we put here? Less than what? There's two approaches. One is best and one is fallible. And I'm going to tell you which one is best, but I'll show you both of the options. The first one is to do grades of I dot length. That works, and basically what that's going to do is it's going to get the length of each row depending on what row we're on. That is the best way to do it. Oftentimes though, you'll see grades of zero dot length, which will just grab the length of the first one here and just assume that we're in a square. The benefit of using i is that it's going to work for jagged arrays as well. So we're going to go with i and go to that length. And then we're going to do k plus plus. Now, inside of this loop, we're going to do the console log. So what are we going to console log? We're going to console log grades, and then we're gonna use two squares. The first one is the row, so we'll just grab the i for the row, and then k for the column, so which element of that row. Now when we do a refresh, it should be 12, 13, 32, 43, 42, 23, and then that's the end of the first row and it goes down to the next one. So it seems to be working. If you wanted to see a little, little bit more visually, you could console log a space or something here just to make it separated. So now it's going to separate each row with a little squiggly. So you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so that works. And the cool thing here is that this should work for jagged arrays, meaning if certain ones are longer than the other, it's not gonna cause any problems like so. So you can see it seems to still console log everything appropriately. If you use grades of zero here, it's going to just grab that first length and it's not going to work the way we expect. So you can see the second one's too short. This one's undefined. Yeah, definitely not what we wanna do. So we wanna use I there. So this is one of the hardest things for me to adapt. And I think I went over using nested for loops earlier on in this series, but it definitely doesn't hurt to go over it again because this was really confusing for me when I was a beginning programmer because the nested K's and the I's and the letters and yeah, it was just gross. So 
I'm gonna teach you guys a better solution, which is to use the for each method. So how exactly does that work? Well, we say grades dot for each, like so. And then in here, we pass our own function. So we say function, and then inside of the curly braces, we can define our function. You can set it up to look like this. Sometimes I'll put it like this just to save some space, and I'll put these on the same line as well. So it'll end up looking like this. Now in here, we can const log each row, which will be basically an array of its own. So we need to get the element, like so. You could call it element, I'm gonna call it row actually. And we can console log that row. And let's comment out this for loop because, just because. And I'll do a refresh, and you can see we get each one of those rows. So it seems to be working. But what if we wanted to do this with a multi-dimensional array where we want to do each element rather than each row? Well, we actually have to do another for each. So the way we do this is we access that row, which is an array itself, and say for each. And inside of here, we pass another function. So it's going to look like this. And then inside of here, we're accessing that element. So we could say console log. We need to get, we'll just call it column or call, we need to get that, and we're just gonna console log it. Now when we do a refresh, we get all of those elements. After each individual row, I'm going to just do a console log with some squigglies, just so it's nice and easy to see, like that. And you can see, we get that original output. So this here is the same thing as this here. And I think this needs to be back there, yeah. And this needs scooted back one too. Yeah, sorry about that indent error. <laughs> so you can see it's a lot cleaner because you don't have to worry about I's or K's. You just have to worry about figuring out how to set up the callback functions. It definitely can be confusing at first, but in the long run, this is the cleaner, better solution. So try to get used to this when you're going through arrays. You also see that we don't have to worry about undefined here. And we didn't in this case, but if we wanted to be proper, we would need a condition for the rows, and then another condition for the columns. So lots of checking there. We're saving some time by using the for each here. So that is all I have for you guys on multi-dimensional arrays and how to iterate through them. Hopefully that was helpful for you and just got you some more practice working with arrays. In the next video, we're going to be going over break and continue. And you might be thinking, what, didn't we already talk about that? Well, indeed we did, but now we're going to be talking about labels, which Labels allow us to basically do something a little magical. So you'll definitely want to check it out. And it's definitely a, an important thing when we're dealing with nested for loops. So I'll see you guys in the next video.